All right, what's going on, everybody? I'm going to do a crypto market update because it seems like a lot has happened since yesterday and this morning. So let's talk about it. First thing I want to talk about is the CPI inflation data that came out here in the US month over month. Um, expectations were 1.2%. Um, we got the print at 1.2%. Year over year, expectations were 8.4%. And we got 8.5% as a print. So really not too far of a deviation from what the expectations are. Um, I think most people probably around the world, especially here in the US, know that um, inflation is going to be a thing. And when news events themselves become apparent and they're visible to almost everybody and predictable, um, the markets don't really swing a whole lot unless those expectations on the day of are actually a surprise. So this to me is not a surprise, just like it's not to anyone else. And that's why we don't really see a big reflection in the market. In fact, the reflection in the market was probably from maybe you know one or two days ago where we started to see that breakdown in the market in anticipation of a potentially uh, severely, ba uh, severely bad print. So the market has now in my opinion, priced in a pretty negative print uh, and possibly any, say, you know, bad news that may um, arise in the next you know, 24, 48 hours. Um, because when the markets get aggressively oversold like this, right, um, it's going to take you know, something severely bad to tank them further. In fact, um, if the news landscape is calm and it's neutral, the markets are much easier to start you know, pushing back up basically to the point where they started to break down from, whether it's right here around the $43,000 level or whether it's way the heck up here around 46,000. Now you guys know very well uh, in the Advantage community, right? I've been long, I've been bullish, I've been buying the pullback all the way down for the last two to three days. Um, I stopped actually buying um, and going along right around here when we started to have this first breakdown, this is where I started to scale in and enter my long positions, and I'm glad I did. And then just yesterday, we added a little bit here um, right at the lows for uh, certain, um, certain assets, okay? Now, I still continue to believe that probably most of Q2 um, is, is going to be, um, you know, a up movement towards 50 50K, 52K, maybe as high as 58K, okay? That's my optimistic belief. Um, I could definitely be wrong, right? We've come down basically from 48,000 to 40,000. But the thing about that is, if we actually look at, say, a retracement move, right, from the lows that we put in here around 33,000 on 24th of January to the high here around 48,000, we've basically come back to the 61.8% 61, 61 or 618 FIB, okay? That's a pretty good retracement. That is, we call this zone right here, 61.8 to, to about 65%, the golden pocket, right? It's a golden pocket because that's a perfect amount of retracement where most participants start to really, really start to question their thesis if the market is supposed to head back up. And that's where you start to see also a lot of people basically start to you know guess and say hey from here it's probably going to start breaking down and then maybe they start shorting these lows right here so all in all you get a lot of participation in key fib areas like that and when you get a lot of participation it generates a lot of volume and you can kind of see there's a good amount of volume that has been stacked up not only on the derivative side uh, whether it's the BitMEX exchange, FTX, Binance futures, et cetera, but on the spot side as well. If you go to the spot markets on Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, we saw a good amount of selling happen at these lows, not only in Bitcoin, but in Ethereum and other altcoins as well. So it, this to me is indicating that either this is the bottom or we are very, very close to a bottom. If we do have one more sweep, I do have another level in mind, which is this red line right here that you'll see. It is um, just around these three levels, which mark the previous higher lows like this. It is really not necessary for us to go and tag that liquidity right there. But you know, if something 
I don't know, crazy happens uh, through the rest of the week, or we do have another big sell pressure come into the market again, then I would be looking at that particular level around $37,000. Uh, in which case, there are certain assets I'm also paying attention to. For example, Kyber Network, which has been performing much better than most other assets. I will say, however, that Kyber has basically put in a bearish SFP, which is you know the inability to break above the previous all-time high and hold. So that's around this level right here, 436, this marker. Let me make that a different color for y'all. Okay, so that level right there, the fact that Kyber Network is not able to break above yet uh, is a sign that, okay, this could be a failed breakout. You know, maybe we start breaking back in. Um, you could play this with a short, you know, stop above this local high. But uh, if you do start seeing, you know, price break down like this, and then it starts trending back up, I think Kyber Network is probably a better long than a short. Okay, not investment advice, but I'm just letting y'all know that when assets start to show you overperformance to the upside, it's better not to fade them. Right, especially when the overall market, whether it's Bitcoin and ETH and many other altcoins, have severely you know sold off over the last week. Okay, it's better to kind of focus on the upside because that could be sort of the bigger play, um, you know, where most people are offsides and they would not expect more upside. If we look at a couple of other um, metrics, so for example, let me pull up a different chart. Let's just say you know total market cap. Okay. So total market cap is a, let me do this. Okay. There we go. Now it's working. All right. So total market cap um, and total to market cap, they're, they're both important metrics in my opinion. Uh, and if you actually look at the total market cap, right, it's really nothing, you know, too different than what Bitcoin's um, uh, chart looks like, right? Because total market cap is nothing but, you know, Bitcoin, and Ethereum, and all the other altcoins below it uh, and their market caps added together. And Bitcoin being the biggest market cap asset obviously is going to dictate the movement of this chart, okay? But the important metric of this is, you know, the 200-day moving average right here. I find that really interesting because what it kind of tells you is, um, you know, price uh, as per the market cap has found, you know, support and resistance right around this 200 day MA. And you can see right here, we rejected that 200 day moving average for several, several days here at the beginning of April and we broke down. Now we need to make sure that, let's just say, from a trend line perspective, okay, from a trend line perspective, you ideally want to make sure that this starts moving away from this level. Yeah, it may come back to retest the support level around 1.7 trillion, which is this trend line support, but it doesn't need to. It's not necessary that price has to come to that level because if it does, okay, so let's just say we do, you know, market cap to price perspective, okay? So if market cap drops by 10% to come meet this trend line, that's a 10% drop in the overall market cap. So at minimum, Bitcoin will drop by eight to 10%. Most other altcoins will probably drop by, I don't know, 10, 15, 20% in some cases. You don't really want that to happen, right? So I'm, I'm really hoping that price from here, hopefully in this particular area, it has found a bottom, all right? And it starts trending up from here. That would be the ideal scenario for Bitcoin and for other altcoins. Um, KNC is obviously one of the assets I'm paying attention to. Near has been obviously one of the better performers in terms of other L1s in the space. You can kind of see structurally how Near looks compared to say other L1s like FTM. Here's how FTM looks. Okay. Here's how Atom looks. Not good at all. Um, here's how Polkadot looks. Also not good. Um, but Solana looks better, right? Solana looks better. Not as great as near, but better. Luna also looks pretty good, especially over the last you know month or two, but not as good as near right now. Avax also the same, but not as good as near. But the top of my list is definitely Avax, near, Luna, Solana, and also Rune, kind of. Okay, 
Rune has been a clear outperformer basically since, you know, um, end of February, right? It actually uh, moved the most off the lows compared to any other L1 ecosystem right here. Okay, so definitely pay attention to these assets. Um, other assets that I've mentioned before, you know, Maple Finance, I've talked to my Advantage members about Maple Finance um, about a month ago. And we mentioned Maple Finance right around this particular area. Uh, I got in around 23 and a half, uh, and I'm still riding part of that position. I trimmed some uh, around 40, 45, and then 55, 56. I'm still holding uh, one third of my position now. I'm hoping for maybe 75 to $100. Again, a clear outperformer um, in, in market conditions where you start to see that good assets, okay? Not Dogecoin, not Shiba, none of that garbage, but good altcoins that have good fundamentals, uh, Rune or Luna or Maple Finance, Kyber Network, um, bridge protocols like, you know, Stargate or uh, Synapse. Once these start performing well, you need to start paying attention, okay? And as I've told you all before, I will remain bullish on risk assets in crypto as long as ETH BTC ratio is in a very nice uptrend, which it has been basically since the beginning of March. Okay. So that's a good month, month and a half of nice uptrend that we've put in. As long as we keep up this uptrend, this local uptrend that is, I'll be bullish on BTC, ETH, and probably a few quality altcoins. Okay. Um, let's move on to ETH. So Ethereum, same thing, right? I think ETH has kind of hit a local low around $3,000. We do have a short week coming up. Remember, Friday is a holiday here in the US. You may have some sharp volatility to the downside. But again, I, I would kind of figure that gets absorbed, all right? Um, I, I really do think that uh, the markets are in crypto heavily fear-based right now. A lot of you know fear that's been baked into crypto. Also, the stock market. And the fact that, you know, we have negative news upon negative news coming in every week and the markets are not selling off aggressively is telling me that we're actually in the midst of an up move rally, but in part of a larger context bear market, right? So, so what I've explained is um, to my Advantage members is, you know, so this is, for example, like, you know, the near term uh, price action that we're going through, okay? We might be here, but we still have one more move or two more moves to the upside. But then in contrast, you know, this is what we've been doing here, but then we have another move at some point later this year that's going to probably take us down further. And that I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know what kind of, um, in what kind of violent manner or speed it may happen, but I am expecting it in Q3 and Q4. So while I am bullish in the near term for a remainder of Q2, for the most part, um, for the rest of 2022, I'm very, very cautious. Um, I'm going to be very, very uh, uh, aggressive in wanting to take profit and take gains off the table and not holding on the spot and blindly hoping for a new bull market or new paradigm or any of that garbage that people talk about. Okay, And not buying it because I really believe that we may be ignoring the bad news right now and the macro conditions right now, but overall, there is a lot that we have to fix from the risk asset, uh, risk asset perspective, as well as um, how global economies are being reshaped, whether it's the Russia-Ukraine war, whether it's high inflation, whether it's slowing GDP, um, you know, slowing economies across the world. All this stuff really does tie into um, equity markets, risk markets. And I think crypto will definitely see a brunt of that, you know, movement at some point this year. But for now, I'm bullish. I don't see any reason to be bearish right now. Okay. Yes, I could be wrong. Yes, the market could uh, could break down further, but I am not that concerned right now. I just fully believe that the market has baked in way too much fear. I think way too many people are bearish. Um, it's much much easier just to, to be a bear right now. The positioning is, you know, even right now, um, it's so much easier to be positioned uh, on the short side, uh, but it's much easier to get squeezed out to the upside. So it, to me, that looks like a pretty good opportunity to just, you know, hope that 
um, the upside is going to be imminent. Okay. And it's not, you know, delusional hopium or anything. I mean, it's not like I'm buying the literal highs and gig alonging everything. I'm very cautious with my risk, my stops, not over leveraging as you always should be. Um, so yeah, uh, real quick, uh, folks, if y'all could hit the thumbs up as you're watching this video, I would really appreciate it. Uh, we put out a ton of content. We also have this private community right here where I post a lot of analysis, a lot of my thoughts on the market, um, everything, you know, related to uh, crypto, uh, altcoins, Bitcoin, um, you know, market cap perspective. We even talk about the stock market uh, over here. We talk about a lot, you know, in terms of what's happening in the NFT space. Um, you guys will see my Twitter being very engaged with the NFT space, especially in the Solana area. Uh, our Discord channels are very much engaged with um, uh, the, the NFT space. So make sure y'all come join our Discord community. You can join our private community right here on thealphatrades.com. Hit the products page right here and um, join the Advantage membership. 97 per month gets you access to everything. Everything in this Discord side, two videos a day, uh, the analysis that you're seeing, and then of course our 5K challenge account, um, which we've performed, in my opinion, really well. We've actually beat the market. We beat Bitcoin. We beat Ethereum. We beat a, a basically a basket of altcoins that you could put together in the top ten. So we're doing um, pretty darn well. All right, and a lot of you know um, this has to do with uh, the community you know, really um, expecting my analysis on a day-to-day -day basis, and they are using it for their own perspective, uh, for their own analysis, for their own education. And I think that's helped people a lot. And the gains reviews that you'll see in these channels, as well as on our website, is a reflection of uh, the success of our community, okay? So uh, moving on to some data points, and then we'll wrap it up. So overall, open interest starting to roll over a little bit. This is, in my opinion, a good sign. You want to see leverage come down in times like this. And as leverage comes down, this open interest, as you can see, um, that means that longs are more than likely being flushed out of the market. And that's good because that means that you have excess and froth you know, being cleaned up from the leverage side over levered traders, over zealous traders, they're getting cleaned out. Um, volumes overall are still relatively down. Um, I really don't expect volumes to hit, you know, massive levels until maybe later this year, uh, maybe even beginning of next year, but overall there are still pockets of the market, like I pointed out, which are definitely worth being, uh, paying attention to. And you could still play the internals of the market, not scalping, but internal movements like the last, you know, three out of uh, four weeks. We were actually longing the market. Then we basically closed out pretty close at the top, I would say. Uh, we avoided this big drawdown, and then we started buying only over the last you know, four days or so. That is how you basically play markets like this, not just you know, blindly staying long or blind, blindly buying every single pullback, just recognizing you know, where the internals of the market are, um, whether you are an Elliott wave trader or you draw wave counts or support or resistance levels. However you do that, um, you have to be able to recognize, you know, what your edge is in the market, be able to secure that profit um, and, you know, mark that into your portfolio as an actual realized profit. Okay. So volumes coming down, um, no big liquidations, really. I mean, yesterday was a pretty big day, but today I expect calm tomorrow and Thursday. Um, I would probably expect some mean reversion to the upside or maybe just like more sideways movement. Um, and then obviously, you know, Friday and the weekend being a long weekend, uh, I would probably say that, you know, you're going to get some more chop. I don't expect massive moves either up or down in the market, but um, I, would, I would definitely be careful, you know, not to get caught in positions over the weekend because that, that could get really rough. All right. And then let me see here, um, really nothing in terms of uh, big open interest changes. Let's see, coins, um, we're going to talk about Kyber Network. Uh, this is an interesting you know, movement, right? Monero has a big jump in open interest, a slight pop. 
usually when I start seeing a discrepancy in open interest, like big pop in open interest, and then price has not moved a whole lot, uh, it's, it's a, you know, as long as price is moving up, it's a possibility that you can probably jump long and ride, you know, for some more of the movement to the upside. Okay. Again, you know, not investment advice, but uh, I would look at this chart if I were you um, and see what's out there in terms of uh, SR levels. Okay. Shiba, uh, that, that's actually an interesting play. I want to mention this on my Twitter account. So Robinhood is now listing Compound, Matic, Shiba, and Solana. Of these assets, I think only two are worth probably noting, Solana and Matic. Compound Finance is actually pretty legit. I don't really much care for Shiba, but the most notable one of all of these, though, is Solana because it is actually transacting big volumes, still one of the top tier L1 ecosystems out there, even though it has you know some pretty terrible uh, issues with uh, degradation, uh, you know, network closures, congestions, etc. They're working really, really hard and shipping out code literally, you know, every two or three days. So I I'm very bullish on Solana. Um, I would definitely pay attention to these. These could um, impact the, the price a decent amount because Robinhood traders, I swear, are like the biggest DGENs on the planet. So if they are going to start giga longing, you know, these assets, especially if the market is moving up, you could see some big movements in these. Okay. Um, yeah, really unhappy with what Coinbase is doing. You know, Coinbase listing all kinds of garbage, uh, Pokemon and big data protocol and all kinds of shit. Uh, we really don't trade this kind of stuff in our advantage community. Um, if you're looking for that kind of, you know, uh, garbage scalping, um, this is not the community for you. We do, you know, thorough analysis in the market. I put out deep research pieces on my medium, on my sub stack. And then I do videos like this covering the market in an unbiased way, never getting, you know, too bullish or too bearish looking at both sides of the market. Cause at the end of the day, I'm trading a market um, for my livelihood. Okay. So I can't just be blindly bullish or blindly bearish, right? My life literally depends on the money I make in these markets. And I actually show fully transparently the 5K account to my Advantage members every single day. Every single day we make a video, I show exactly what positions I'm holding, what trades I'm entering, where my stop is, what my size is, where my take profit is, everything, everything in this 5K account. Okay, so if you like transparency like that, it is not meant for copy trading. We do not provide financial advice but it is just simply for me to be transparent with my community. Uh, if you want that kind of transparency, again, hit the thumbs up, join our Advantage community right here, Advantage membership. That gets you access to the 5K account, as well as all these channels, as well as videos like this that you're watching every single day, at least twice a day, multiple times a week, okay? Um, that's pretty much it, folks. That's all I got for y'all. I hope y'all enjoy this analysis. Please do hit the thumbs up. Leave me a thoughts of your comments. Anything else that I should be looking at or paying attention to? Um, I'm pretty active on my Twitter feed. I like to share other people's information. Um, I follow a lot of, um, you know, sort of research pieces from other people. Uh, I plug them uh, into my Twitter. And if I uh, take anything in terms of their points, I will mention it in my Twitter or in my analysis stating that, hey, you know, so-and-so person mentioned this. Uh, and so this is their information, right? So never am I going to try to take other people's information and pass it on as mine. I'm more than happy to plug in people like my friend Imran here. Uh, we did a video together. Uh, he plugged my information into his community and I'm plugging his. Make sure y'all check out his um, channel his, uh, his uh, community, amazing, amazing analysis that he puts out. So I hope you'll check him out. Until then, take care, everybody. Have a good rest of your week. Um, and if y'all need anything, hit me up on Twitter or Discord or YouTube. Cheers.